Ukraine destroys Russia's logistics capabilities in Crimea. Storm Shadow missiles are at work again. The Ukrainian armed forces have successfully hit large landing ships, Yamal and Azov, a communications center and several infrastructure facilities of the Russian Black Sea Fleet. Pavlo Narozny, founder of the charity organization Reactive Post and military expert told Radio NV, most likely it was a cruise missile strike or a storm shadow or, for example, a modified Neptune, which is also a possible option. In any case, this is a very powerful strike. Norozny said he believes it was a successful attack on Russian logistics. Russia has quite a few large landing ships because this is probably the sixth ship hit. If they are not damaged but destroyed, it is also a very powerful blow to logistics because these ships can transport either a battalion or armored vehicles. But usually, Russia employs them to transport shells, shaheds and ammunition. These ships are mostly used for ammunition. This is a very powerful blow to Russian logistics, he added. An oil depot located near the airfield was hit, which means the fuel for warplanes was most likely burned, the expert adds. Russia suffered losses in personnel, as propagandists write that up to 50 soldiers were killed, 30 of them officers, said Narozny, citing Russian mill bloggers. Three aircraft were also damaged at this airfield, the military expert said, with reference to Russian war correspondents. Late in the evening of March the 23rd, there were reports of the arrival of cruise missiles at a main communication center of the Russian Black Sea Fleet in occupied Sevastopol. Osint reports on X. It looks like at least three Ukrainian Storm Shadow cruise missiles have just crashed into the main communication center of the Russian Black Sea Fleet, a blogger said. As we are informed, the missiles struck in the main special communication center of the Black Sea Fleet of the Russian Federation on one Nikolai Muzika STR, the Crimean Wind Telegram channel confirmed the information. Lack of air defense missiles put Ukraine in difficult situation. Russia is going astray. Russian forces are exploiting Ukraine's air defense shortages to launch a renewed assault that aims to destroy the country's energy grid, the Institute for the Study of War, ISW, wrote in their March 22nd report. The Russian military targeted over 130 energy infrastructure facilities across Ukraine overnight on March the 21st to the 22nd in a massive drone and missile attack. The attack struck Ukraine's hydroelectric station, the Dnipro hydroelectric power plant and dozens of other facilities. The attacks represented the largest series of combined drone and missile strikes targeting Ukrainian energy infrastructure since the start of the full-scale invasion. The ISW said Russian attacks against Ukraine's power grid in the winter of 2022 destroyed half the country's energy infrastructure. Ukraine braced itself for another winter of Russian assaults on the grid, but Prime Minister Denis Shmihal said at the end of January 2024 that Ukraine's energy sector was stable. The massive aerial attack on March the 22nd indicates that Russia may not have given up on the goal of disrupting Ukraine's power grid. Russian strikes on energy infrastructure in early spring 2024 likely aim to collapse the energy grid in part to stall Ukrainian efforts to rapidly expand its defense industrial base. The ISW said, critical shortages in Kyiv's air defense missile systems also offer the Russian military another chance to disrupt the grid. The Washington Post reported on March the 15th that the shortage may soon force Ukraine to adjust its strategy regarding Russian attacks, shooting down only one out of every five missiles. The ISW said Russian forces will likely exploit this window of opportunity as long as the shortage lasts. Russian forces failed to collapse the Ukrainian energy grid on March the 22nd, but may aim to continue intensified strikes on energy infrastructure in subsequent strike seasons series, especially to capitalize on continued delays in Western security assistance that are reportedly expected to significantly constrain Ukraine's air defense umbrella, analysts said. Ukraine's ability to replenish its missile stocks relies on the continued flow of U.S. aid, which has been stalled in a congressional deadlock for six months. Sweden prepares prolonged conflict with Russia. Sweden is determined to confront Russia as part of NATO, 
The newest member of the US-led military bloc has pledged arming Ukraine is a way to deal with Moscow's appetites, Foreign Minister Tobias Bilstrom said. The top diplomat praised his country's future contribution to NATO's strategy for the Baltic region in an interview with German state broadcaster Deutsche Welle. Sweden formally joined the US-led military bloc earlier this month. It is not Sweden and NATO that constitutes a problem, he told the broadcaster. It is Russia that is behaving irresponsibly and recklessly. Billstrom cited examples of Russian behavior that he finds unacceptable, primary among which is the military operation in Ukraine. Moscow, however, perceives the conflict as part of a Western proxy war against Russia. It has cited NATO's expansion in Europe, which was done in breach of Western promises to Moscow as among the primary causes of the hostilities. The tensions will persist for years to come, the Swedish official predicted. We are in for a prolonged period of conflict with Russia. It goes for NATO, it goes for the EU, and we have to adapt ourselves accordingly, he added. The diplomat claimed that Russia was on a path towards regaining its former imperial assets as he justified NATO's military buildup in the Baltics. Bilstrom, who was visiting Berlin, demonstrated his solidarity with Kiev by wearing a lapel pin featuring the national flags of Sweden and Ukraine. When asked about future aid, he declined to make any pledges about Swedish-made Saab JAS-39 Gripen fighter jets or Swedish troops on the ground. We should do more, of course, but that does not mean that we necessarily have to do it on Ukrainian soil, he explained.